In this tutorial, we're going to see how to make a teapot explode. All right, start by drawing a teapot. I know that's one of your favorite 3D primitives. Then let's switch from standard primitives to particle systems. And we're going to create a P array, particle array. And simply just drag this particle array somewhere in a viewport. Doesn't matter the size, it's just a symbol. Uh, that's going to help us link the teapot to the particle array. Next you want to use the basic parameters under the particle array and choose the pick option, pick object option and then choose the teapot. The teapot will highlight and then you should see under the pick op object option that the teapot is now listed there. Next we're going to move on down under the view Port display option, choose the mesh option, then we're going to unroll the particle generation rollout, check a few features about it. Uh, we're going to leave all these at the default for right now, but later on we can see how to come back and change the start and the stop and the actual lifespan of the explosion. We'll unroll the particle type, we'll choose object fragments. And at this point, if you drag your animation slider, you should see the teapot start to explode. Of course, we have one problem right now. Our teapot explodes, but the original teapot remains. Okay, let's say we want the teapot explosion to start at frame 30. And right now, the lifespan of the teapot explosion is only 30 frames and it starts at zero so by frame 30 it's over so let's go back up under the particle generation rollout and let's change the start of the particle timing let's start it at frame 30 and let's extend the life to frame 50 well not to frame 50 but 50 total frames so the particle timing of the explosion should start at frame 30 and extend to frame 80 since 30 plus 50 equals 80. So now I'm dragging my slider at frame 30. It starts to explode slowly, slowly. I see all the particles keep going and by frame 80 they're all gone. And the explosion is complete. However, our teapot's still there. In the next step we'll see how to make it disappear. All right, so how do we make this dang teapot disappear? Well, let's right click on the teapot and choose the curve editor. Let's maximize this curve editor. Oops, that's too maximized for this video. Let me just drag it out some. And you should see a listing of a bunch of different variables that are in the curve editor. We're actually looking for the teapot, so let's highlight the teapot and go up to the tracks pull down menu and we're going to add a visibility track. Okay, once we've added the visibility track, we want to add some keys onto it and actually control the visibility of the teapot. So let's expand the teapot listing by clicking on the little plus symbol to the left of it. And now we can see the visibility track. We want to add a key. There's a little icon for adding a key, or you can go to a pull down menu to add a key. But let's add a key at frame zero, and then let's add another key at frame 30. Notice I'm reading down here at the bottom where my frames are. Now we want to move the keys, and anytime the I picked the wrong move icon. Of course, we can always go to move keys under the keys pull down menu. Anytime the key is below this zero line, the teapot will be invisible. Of course, we want the teapot to be visible up until frame 30. I can actually move my frame indicator here if I want to. I want to move it out of the way. So at frame 30, I want the teapot to disappear. However, we have a, a curve now, so the teapot will actually disappear 
on a gradual curve and it's going to disappear before frame 30 which is not what we want so if we right click on one of the keys we can change the way the key react in between the key points so that it's more of a square path instead of a, a, a curved spline looking path so right now we can see that this key right at frame 30 is below the zero line so it'll be visible straight on until frame 30 and then it should disappear so let's close this out and see how it works. Okay, I've minimized my track view curve editor. I'm back where I can see my teapot in the perspective view. And if I start moving my slider, I see the teapot. And as I get to frame 30, I see the explosion start. And as I go to frame 31, voila! The teapot, the original teapot is no longer there. Well, you see it ghosted, but when we render this, it will be invisible beginning at frame 30.